Hey everyone, thank you so much for being here today. My name is Denise, I'm also known as Hey Wig Sister on Instagram and Facebook. Today we are going to take heat to a wavy slash curly heat friendly wig. This is Raquel Welch, editor's pick in the color hazelnut. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it on a wig head and we're gonna take steam to it because heat friendly wigs need heat to keep them feeling nice, flowing well, keep the ends from getting um, frayed and frizzy. I've shown you how to do that with a straight wig before, and I haven't really done it much with a curly wig. So we're gonna experiment a little bit, and we're gonna try to take a little bit of steam to this wig, just to see if we can revive these fibers a little bit. They're, they're doing pretty well, but they are starting to get a little frizzy. They're getting a little clumpy. So hopefully we can learn how to do this together. If you'd like to know how to do it, then stick around and I'll show you what I'm gonna do. So heat friendly wigs need to have heat taken to them regularly in order for them to stay in good condition. That is one of the pitfalls of getting a heat friendly wig. I think there are lots of benefits but I know that a lot of new wig wearers, when they're not familiar with that, it's a really rude awakening when you wear it a few times and it starts to feel a little clumpy and starts to look a little frizzy. And how often you need to take heat to your wig is really variable. It's going to depend on how often you're wearing it, what conditions you're wearing it in, the length of the wig, all sorts of things impact how often you need to take heat to it. Just like every other thing with wigs, how you wear them, where you wear them, how you care for them, all of that impacts the longevity. So I have Editor's Pick Elite in the color Hazelnut, and this one I got used a long time ago from a wig sister. And the ends, I, it's really hard to show you guys this on camera, unfortunately, but the ends are getting really kind of frizzy, and they're feeling frizzy. The ends feel really frizzy, especially right here. And it's just not feeling great. It's starting to feel like a worn wig and it's not moving as great. And so I wanted to show you guys how I am going to take steam to this and we'll see what our results are. In the video that I did where I show you how to care for straight heat friendly wigs, which I will link in the description, I talked about how taking heat to a wig will alter the style. It may straighten a curl pattern or a wave pattern. It, you can also add curl and wave to a wig. So that is one of the challenges with this whole thing is not altering the style so much that it looks completely different. I have not had a lot of experience with curly or wavy heat friendly wigs on purpose because I didn't want to deal with the care and maintenance of them, but I wear straight heat friendly wigs all the time. Right now I'm wearing Raquel Welch editor's pick in the color fiery copper. One of my favorite styles and I really love this color. I find straight heat friendly wigs, especially this length, anything above your collar to be really easy to what care What we're gonna for. do is we're gonna take steam and because I don't want to alter this curl pattern as, or at least as little as possible, I'm going to limit how much I actually pass any tool through like a wide tooth comb because when I get it hot and then when I pass the wide tooth comb, I'm actually pulling and stretching those fibers and while they're hot, that's actually going to straighten them some. I may not be able to avoid it because it's feeling so frizzy back here. I may have a challenge with that, but we're gonna try. So what we're gonna do, and I'll link all anything I use, if I can link it in the description, I absolutely will. So we're gonna use steam, and we're just going to lightly steam over these fibers and sort of fluff them up, and I'm hopeful that taking some steam to them will soften them up a little bit. Here's the thing though, the longer you wait to steam, or you don't have to steam your heat friendly fibers, you can take a hot air brush to them, you can take a hair dryer to them, you can take a flat iron to them, but the longer you wait to take heat to them, and the more worn they get, the more intervention they'll need. If you take a little bit of heat to them every few wears, 
you can ward off some of the frizziness and some of the fraying and potentially not need to take as much heat in, a, in an individual session. That's what I have found when I take heat to my wigs like this, if I just take my little hot airbrush that is actually low heat and I just pass it through the ends every now and then, I only need to do it a few passes. I don't have to spend a lot of time and I certainly don't have to pull out my steamer for that. So keep that in mind if you're gonna wear heat friendly wigs. You might want to get into the habit of taking heat to them. So let's just go ahead and do that. So my steamer is ready. You can see it's producing steam. I'm gonna be careful not to burn my hands, but I'm just gonna sort of steam it and then I'm gonna sort of fluff it. Now I do wish that this had had heat taken to it sooner. It might have been feeling a little bit better, but it is what it is. We'll just deal with it. Now, because these ends are feeling so crispy, I'm going to want to pay some special attention to those ends. But my first pass is just to sort of give this a light steaming all throughout. Now, if you want, if there's something about the style that you're not liking, now is a great time to maybe get some lift in some bangs or fix the bangs, anything that you feel like you need to do. Now is a good time since you have your steamer out. All right, so now I'm just gonna gently pass my wide tooth comb through. The reason I didn't do this while I was steaming it was because I wanted to give the fibers just a little bit of time to cool because I really don't wanna do this too much. I don't know if I can avoid relaxing this somewhat. I guess we're gonna find out together. I did comb through this before I started steaming, but because these fibers are getting quite dry, it's just tangling again. So we're just in that sort of situation with this wig. Sorry guys, that's, that's the risk. When I do my videos up here, it's just the risk with the dogs. That's why I don't film my reviews up here most of the time. All right, so I combed through. I'm just trying to fluff it back up and see how that curl responds. So on the parts of the wig that weren't really super dry feeling and weren't starting to feel frayed and crispy like up here, it actually feels and looks really good so far. Now it did get the wig a little damp, but I'm not feeling a ton of difference down here. So I'm really worried that I'm not gonna be able to avoid running a comb through. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go grab a round brush and see if that helps a little bit. So hang tight. I have a round brush here. And so what I'd like to do is I'd like to sort of focus it at the ends in the kind of at the nape right now. So I'm going to steam and I'm going to run my round brush through it and I'm going to kind of brush it under. Yeah, they're so crispy. It's kind of hard to get the brush to go through it. So as you can see, I'm just taking, I'm sort of chasing the brush with the steamer. And then after I do that, I'm sort of fluffing it back up again. So hopefully I can maintain some of that wave pattern.
So you like chase your comb or brush or whatever it is that you're using. And so what I'm doing is I'm heating up the fibers and the steam is protecting them a little bit. It's not the dry, harsh heat. And then the comb is sort of smoothing them out, stretching them out just slightly so that hopefully what we're doing is we're making them smoother again. We're bringing them back together. And it's gonna be a little bit hard to tell how well this did until it's, a little, it's dry. But I'm just gonna sort of chase these ends. I'm not gonna be able to pull on this at the same time, so I'm just gonna warm it up and then I'm gonna come through with my brush. So again, I'm just kind of heating up those ends with the steam. And now I'm going to take and I'm just going to pull that brush through. I don't want to pull it through the whole style because again, I don't want to, I'm trying not to alter this wave pattern too much. So I'm being very strategic about where I am steaming. I'm not, I went through the whole wig fluffing it up. And now I'm just looking for the worst end. And then after I do that, I'm sort of twisting that curl back in. So when it fully cools, hopefully we still have waves. Now, if you have a super curly piece, this is gonna be challenging to be able to keep those curls intact. Unfortunately, I don't have enough experience with it to help you guys with that right now, but my best advice to you, again, I'm pulling it through, I'm holding onto the top, so I'm not yanking on the cap, and then I'm just kind of fluffing and twisting those curls back in. I am not running this through the whole length of the hair. Up here doesn't need all that. I think just some light steaming and fluffing is gonna be enough for that part of it. It's the ends I wanna concentrate on. So I'll show you that one more time. Let me see, what have I got? here. So I'm going to stick the brush on it. I'm going to steam up the hair on the brush. A couple of seconds. I don't know. I'm just kind of guessing how long it needs. Then I'm holding at the top and I'm running that. I'm curving it as I run it through it so that I'm not fully straightening it. And then once I get it through, I'm fluffing it and I'm twisting it. So I'm trying to put a little bit of that wave back in and hopefully it will dry with some of it. So let's take a look at this piece right here. So this one is actually pretty straight. So what I'm thinking, I'm just trying to think of the best way to do this. I'm going to actually curl out with this one and try to get the curl to go back. So I'm gonna heat this up, just like I've been doing. Now I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna do it backwards. Instead of going under like I was doing in the back, and then I'm gonna twist it up. And just like that. So again, I'm gonna do that with this piece right here. I'm gonna steam it up could probably be set up just a little bit better for you guys. And then run that through and curl it back. All right, so this was getting really long. So I decided to speed up just this little bit of section as I demonstrate more of what I just explained to you. This is going to be a lot of trial and error, which is why I think it's great to try to find yourself a cheap, heat-friendly synthetic or a used heat-friendly synthetic and practice these things. And once again, I want to reiterate, I'm not the expert on this. I am living my wig life publicly, essentially, and I'm showing you all of the things that I'm trying to help encourage you. I do overall think this is a great technique that can be used on heat friendly, curly and wavy pieces, but I do think you need to intervene earlier than I did on this one so that you don't have as much work to do. It's just so hard to keep that wave and curl pattern intact when you've got to do as much combing and brushing and work as I had to do on this piece. 
but I really hope that you're getting the sense of the technique and some different things that you can try with a steamer to try to revive your curly or wavy heat friendly piece. And just like you, the more I do this, the better I will get and the more I'll be able to bring you here on video. So let's chat for just a second because I have a couple of things I want to bring to your attention. Turn this a little bit. So first of all, we're always told never to brush a heat friendly synthetic. So obviously I'm breaking that rule right now. But when you're trying to rehab a wig or when you're trying to deal, I have a flyaway that's really bothering me. When you're trying to um, uh, revive a wig, a wide tooth comb is not enough. There, there's just too much space in between here to really do what you need to do with the fibers. That's why I think this is one of the exceptions that you can use a brush. I recommend that you try to find a pla all plastic brush to use. They do, tons of the round brushes have boar's hair in it or some sort of synthetic kind of hair type fiber. I think that's going to put a lot of friction on the wig and I think we want to try to avoid friction as much as possible. We can't fully avoid it, unfortunately. So we do the best we can and I think these all plastic round brushes are good for that and I will link them in the description. I did just recently purchase them. Um, if your wig is in horrible condition, just super frayed, super ratty, then you might need to fully straighten the wig and then put curl back in it. You may not be able to save the curl. In that case, you can do a couple of things. You can take a steamer and then just a regular comb with the skinny little teeth and chase your comb all throughout the wig. That's one way to do it. You could also use a flat iron. I am not good with flat irons. That is not something I can show you. If it were me and I were needing to revive a wig that was close to death, I would do a steamer and a comb. That's what I would do personally. What I want you guys to take away from this is number one, take heat to your heat friendly wigs regularly. I can't give you a formula. It depends on your wig and how often you wear it and the conditions you wear it in and how you care for it. Number two, if you are super uncomfortable playing with your wigs, if you're not ready to do something like this, I do not recommend that you get a curly or wavy piece. I recommend you start with a straight piece if you really want to get to know heat friendly wigs because they're much easier to care for. Number three, the longer the wig, the more you're gonna to have to do stuff like this. So the long, curly, bell truss wigs, I honestly don't know how people keep them looking good for a long time because I have peerless and I have pretty much straightened it by taking heat to those ends and I tried not to. So I guess it's, everyone's mileage will vary, everyone's skill will vary on this whole, whole, whole journey. And number three, don't be afraid to play with your wigs. It is a journey. Eventually though, if you're gonna be a full-time wig wearer, you're gonna to wanna to learn some of this. You can do this with regular synthetic. You can take steam to regular synthetic. So if you have some regular synthetic wigs and the ends are starting to feel really dry and frizzy, you can steam them, you can cut them. So know that this is the one heat that you really can safely take to regular synthetic as well. All right, you guys, I'm gonna stop this video. I'm gonna let this dry for a few minutes. I'm going to put her on and I'm going to see where we're at. Hang on. This is not perfect, but it is feeling a lot better. So it's all of this upper section feels so much softer now, so much smoother. The ends are still just a little bit frizzy. I think maybe it was left to go too long. So I'm just going to try to take some heat to it more regularly and just see if that helps it. I do think I lost a little bit of the wave in the back. Not terrible, but where it was the worst, I think that got straightened just a little bit. I think it's okay, but I do worry a little bit if it were a super curly wig, how that would have turned out. Now again, 
you can always recurl it. My dogs are just starting to play over there. You're going to hear them. So if you decide you really love certain styles in a heat friendly that are wavy or curly, I just really recommend that you try to be proactive about the amount of heat you take to it and learn how to add curl back to it. It could be just a matter of having to add a curl or two. If you're really, really good about caring for the wig, there just may be a few pieces here and there that get a little bit too straightened for your liking. And so maybe you won't have to curl the whole thing, maybe just a few sections here and there. Like for example, you know, maybe I would want to add a little more curl back to right here. And that may be something I'll practice then I can bring you some videos on that. But the point of today was just to give you some education on how to care for these, some ideas on what to do and encouragement, but also a little bit of a warning that if you're not ready for this, then maybe you're not ready for curly and heat friendly, curly and wavy heat friendly. If heat you have okay. some other techniques you can share, if you have some experience that you can help impart wisdom on all of us, your wig sisters who need help, please share that down in the comments. And as I learn more, I will bring you guys more. But as a wig sister, I like to bring you guys education on things that I know very well, but I also like to be real about the experience and bring you things that maybe I'm not quite an expert in, but I may be where you're at. So if I try some things, maybe you'd be willing to try But some. all I can say is this is feeling a ton better. So even though there's a few really ends down kind of on the very bottom that still feel like they need a little something, overall it feels really good. So I think I'm just gonna think about, you know, what do I wanna do? Can I live with, like there's a piece back here. Can I live with that? Or maybe I need to just trim that little bit off. So that's gonna be kind of my next assessment. So if you're where I'm at, that will be your next assessment. All right, you guys, thanks so much for watching. I appreciate you so much. I hope you have a great day. Thank you.